Okay, so a little while ago, I ordered um, some of these, uh, one of these pads, um, because I wanted to make the um, the sand toy um, using a Raspberry Pi and some code from Adafruit. So 64 by 64 um, RGB LED. Uh, then you have a Raspberry Pi to power the um, the RGB matrix, um, a battery charger, uh, boost charger, boost converter, so that you can convert 5 volts, uh, 3.7 volts off the battery, it takes 5 volts, will charge the battery, and you can convert the battery to um, uh, 5.3 volts to power your Raspberry Pi, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to check that. And then, on top of the Raspberry Pi, because this this can take a lot of current, um, because each of these LEDs can draw 60 milliamps, so times roughly 500 LEDs is 3 amps of current could be drawn. These guys are level shifters from the uh, outputs of your Raspberry Pi, which are 3.3, to 5 volts, which is what these LEDs run, to, run off of. So there's some high-speed um, CMOS level shifters in here, and then we've got some power management, um, reverse polarity protection for this, and you can get 5 volt out of here so that you can power um, other things. So you need those few things. Notice it's got this 10-pin header here. That, uh, wait, 16-pin header. Um, so you've got a, uh, a header that pops into here. Let's see, we're going in this side, out that side. So it pops into here. And the folks at Adafruit have a nice um, uh, STL file, a bunch of different um, formats for your 3D file. So you can get a couple of handles, and then you pop a couple of switches on there so that you can provide some input shifting between different uh, animations. And then you've got uh, your power harness here that you can drive your five volts off of um, from there. So uh, this is a, uh, this harness will power uh, a pair of these displays. I'm only gonna be using one, but, uh, but yeah. And so you, um, this is sort of like, I don't know what they call it, a cape, a hat, um, Anyways, so once you've got your <clears throat> header pins installed on your Pi, pop this on top, and then it becomes a nice little unit, and then you've got your, oh yeah, that's the other thing, um, an LIS-3DH, which is a um, six-axis, uh, sorry, three-axis accelerometer, I believe. So X, Y, uh, Z, so... Um, Zed's up here, mount that onto the thing, and then that is what provides the uh, input about the attitude that your your um, device is sitting at. So yeah, um, where did Sadie knock that other button? Couple of buttons. Oh, and then it needs a battery. Um, so we'll put a nice big um, LiPo that I've harvested out of some laptop somewhere. And uh, yeah. That's the plan. Okay, so here's the little wiring diagram. We are we have an an enable pin on here that enables the power out, which is ground and five volts, which is going to our cape or hat or skirt or I'm not sure what you call these. But bonnet. Bonnet. Um uh that goes to the five volts in. So what we're going to be feeding into this thing. Um, so yes, we've got a slide switch to turn this on and off. We've got two buttons that are going to be grounded to um, here. And also on pins 19 and on pin 25. So can we see that? Yeah, well, 24, 25... And this is 16, 19, 20, 21. So that's 19. And that's 25. And those two 
our enable buttons and I need one more jumper between pin four and pin 18 and then we'll be done. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna, oh, I could probably just solder a wire in there. And then that will be the wiring for this. So now what we've got is our accelerometer, our position sensor, it senses the attitude of this assembly in space. And we are going to hook this up to a, uh, put this bonnet onto our Raspberry Pi and then program it and then hook it up to the, to the LED. Yeah, the power boost is supposed to have a removable USB-A because it can be either powered by micro USB or USB-A in terms of charging. So that's uh, that and it uses a JST connector so you can pop uh, LiPo on there and <clears throat> Oh man, these are hard to pull out. But um, yeah, so I'll put a bigger battery on there and we should be good to go. Okay, so we have got a our Raspberry Pi that we are going to download the code from Adafruit onto. Um, so, man, uh, it should be easier, but it uh, took me a little... Well, it's not saying USB hub doesn't work. Um, so that means I had to you know, tear apart the rest of my desk. Um, but uh, burned an image onto an SD card for the Raspberry Pi. First time I've used this one, so I needed a new card. Um, pulled some crap out. And yeah, now we're going to install the software. So they've got a nice installer for software. Um, you just... Um, Use curl to get to the Adafruit website and it downloads an installer and it asks you whether or not you have um, soldered that jumper on there and if you do then you can set it for high qual high quality and what that means is that no sound comes out of the uh, the HDMI HDMI but um, what you do get is you get um, a higher uh, frame rates and things like that. So I chose the quality and yeah. Next up is uh, then there's a few questions. What kind of device do you have? Do you have the RTP bonnet or do you have a hat? Okay, so we've got all the software installed. There's a nice little guide that uh, Adafruit gives you and Pi and um, Okay, so Okay, change of plans. Um I am going to power this from 5 volt um wall adapter rather than try the battery um because I think that I'm not getting enough juice. Um, I think there also might be a problem with either the cable or, well, there's, there's a problem somewhere because the, the LEDs aren't lighting all up. So my first step is going to be, um, I need to get these switches grounded to this and then I can, then I'm, uh, then I should be good to go. Okay. So yeah, right now, if I don't have this board, this plugged into here, these grounds are floating, so the switches um, aren't telling your Pi um, to do anything. They're just because the ground is floating. There's no voltage reference to tell high or low. Well, as per usual, um, in my haste to get something done, I neglected to carefully read all of the instructions that Adafruit kind of kindly puts on their website, and. Well, I remember reading about this, but then I forgot as I was putting
putting the stuff together. This jumper on the back is needed for supporting 64 by 64 bit panels because they use something called 130 second scan, which I'm not quite 100% sure what it does yet, but um, in any event, if you solder a blob and short pin 8, or this um, side labeled 8 to the center, you will, uh, or 16, depending on which vendor makes your board, you will um, have more joy. So let's start with 8, and then if that doesn't work, we'll move on to try 16. Okay, let's see what we get. Oh, ha ha ha. Let me put side. Oh, much better. Okay. <clears throat> Moral of the story, RTFM. Read the friendly manual. So I don't know if it's going to show up on the video, but you can see the uh, the scanning um, of the matrix when you're looking at uh, looking at video. Now let's slowly reintroduce reintroduce those changes. Uh, revert out those changes. So I'm gonna now power it off of the five volt out and see what we get. Yes, same sort of what we expect. And then the next step is to try and hook this up to battery. So it runs off of battery and see what we get. Okay, so we now have the Pi powered through the battery boost circuit here. And let's see what we get on our display. Once she powers up. And contact. Oh yeah, look at that. <clears throat> All right. Now get rid of the keyboard and mouse for starting that thing up and we should be good to go in terms of how to mount that onto the back and make it look neat and the question is going to be do I do a some 3d printing for it or do I just mount it into um, put a, a box on the back with buttons on the side and leave it at that which is probably what I'll do Okay, so if we mount this guy in the corner, then we've got we've got access to USB, power will flip over there, we've got access to HDMI, access to um, our SD card, so we'll just leave a, an exposed area there and then an exposed area there and then the rest will become a container for this and then buttons on the side. That resets it, that moves to the next animation and then all we have to do is plug it in. That's not too bad. Um, I think I fried the uh, I think I fried the boost converter by neglecting to notice that these pigtails that I bought were reverse polarized. I just did not even think, uh, well, I did not even think to check them, which absolutely I should have. Um, famous last words. And so then I wired it up, plugged it into the, uh, the controller, the uh, boost converter, it was reverse polar polarized, and I believe I have destroyed it. So, live and learn.
anyways, um, yeah, now to do a bit of mechanical construction and... So I'm just going to use um, a stack up of standoffs to put a back onto this thing. And uh, that'll do for now because I wanted to rework the uh, electrical inside with batteries and whatnot. So for, for now, just for having it to play with, I think that'll be fine. These uh, look like they're mounted about 9 millimeters from the edge and they are 30, what did I say, 32 millimeters from the other edge, so um, I don't know if you can see that, scribe some lines using a marking gauge and uh, ping some holes in there and then I'll put, uh, that'll give me the location of the standoffs for the back and then I need to locate standoffs for this guy so that it is locate this guy so that it is not getting um, any of its connectors impinged by the by the standoffs and that shouldn't be too hard once I've got the standoffs on. So these standoffs are a little long so I just have to file them down a bit. That's much better. And since they're brass no use getting out any power tools, just a hand file will do. 25 swipes. These space heaters are a frickin' fire hazard. Holy smokes. So, they, they probably, to be fair, they probably weren't rated for continuous operation. And out here in the, in the shop, it, it doesn't ever get to the right temperature. But, uh, yeah. I'm not sure what uh, what the uh, rated temperature was for this terminator block, but um, it certainly uh, certainly got hot enough to ignite the insulation on it. Oh man, electricity. It is so dangerous, so dangerous. So I don't have any small spade connectors that can fit onto there. So I'm going to have to desolder this, mount the buttons onto the back, um, and then resolder the uh, the wiring harness on. But eh, it's not the end of the world. Okay. That's the switches on, mounted on the back, and then we've got the pie sitting here, um, and then the ha the bonnet's going to go on there, and the accelerometer there, and then do some wiring. We're good. Okay, so there we have it mounted inside, soldered up. Now I just have to figure out what height these spacers need to go at and we'll be good to go. Okay, and there is the finished build. We've got room in, to get at the Raspberry Pi. We can plug our USB and our HDMI and our power. We can get at the SD card if we need to. Our accelerometer is mounted in there. The, um, the wiring stays out of the way. It's a pretty reasonable build. I got a couple of buttons down here. It would be nicer if they were on the side, but actually thinking thinking about it, you're going to be moving the thing around like this, so or you're going to be putting it down on the ground. So either way, you're probably going to have buttons getting in your way, so you might as well just pick one place and put them there. I was thinking about putting standoffs on the back here so that you could sit it down, and then there would be sort of a random pattern type thing happening on, on the top, but... Eh. Maybe that's for a later. Um, that that's also probably why they put the buttons on the top of it uh, for the one that uh, that they did on Adafruit, but um, which is a pretty darn good idea. So buttons up here. In any event, let's power it up and see what we get. It takes a little while to boot up because it is booting Linux, but in any event. Um, There you have it. I 
just have so much fun playing with this thing. Oh my gosh, it's just, <laughs> it's remarkable. So yeah, uh, you can reset it by pressing the uh, right hand button, so it resets the current animation, or you can switch animations by clicking on the left button. So there's three that they've supplied um, as part of the code, and then you reset it by using the right button. So yeah. Um, <laughs> this is just too darn much fun to play with. Too darn much fun. I love it. So some of the things that um, this opens up in my mind are um, this would be a nice display to um, do a uh, Conway uh, life um, toy for. Like, so maybe you move between different starting um, configurations by using the buttons. Um, you might even create a editor with um, some D-pad so that you can move around the matrix and then put dots and then click a button to start the animation. I, I don't know. That's one idea. Um, another idea is um, a rolling ball maze. Um, so you've got a maze that comes up here and then there are little holes and you could have you know, animations that come up when you your ball doesn't fall in the or falls in the hole or animations at the end. So there's, it's another idea that I was thinking about while I was making this that, that one could, could do. And then the, another one is maybe you could even have a 3D sort of maze where you have to flip the, uh, the ball. But I don't know about that. Anyways, it, it just it opens up a wealth of opportunity to be creative with. And uh, yeah, so that was, um, although frustrating in a couple of spots, trying to debug my, um, my silliness at not reading instructions and then not um, paying attention to polarity when I should. Um, other, than, other than those two things, it was a pretty fun build. And I am happy I have it. And I thank you very much for watching. And I'll talk to you later. Bye for now. Wow. Hmm. Is it dinner time? <laughs>